Oh, man. I think I may have come down with something. I may have a slight cold. <coughs> mm. Could you bring me some hot water? Sometimes I like to pretend I'm George Takei. I know I've said this before about the uh, Coffee Lake CPUs not being supported by the Z270 motherboards. Even though the sockets seem to be damn near identical. I mean, I'm looking at them right now, personally, and it's the same fucking socket. Intel has opted to have the Z270 boards not, uh, what is it, forward compatible, I believe, with the new Coffee Lake CPUs, but new stuff is coming out that the Z370 motherboards will have some support for Cabby Lake processors. But honest to God, I mean, I don't know why on earth you buy a Z370 motherboard for your KB Lake processor when Coffee Lake would be out. It would be kind of counterproductive to me unless you're hell bent on having four cores versus six. And at these prices, it's a little tough. But you know, but honestly, actually, the i5s are also six cores. But do they have hyper threading? I can't remember. There possibly will be and there possibly won't be. All these leaks are hard to pin down. I supposedly found benchmarks for them, but now I can't find them anymore, so I'm gonna have to skip that. I just wanted to make some sort of note of this. And supposedly there's speculation that there'll be a BIOS update. Maybe, maybe is the key word that Z270 boards would be able to be compatible with Coffee Lake processors. Which honestly to me, I think would be a smart move on Intel's part considering it's the same fucking socket and Ryzen doesn't seem to have this issue. But let's move on to something else, something that was slightly more interesting. So anyway, this just recently leaked from uh, Eurocom or something like that. Apparently, there's going to be a Z390 chipset. Well, obviously, I mean, let's face it. Even though it makes you wonder where the fuck did the Z380 go? Well, the new Z390 MOBOs that have leaked are going to support 8-core 16-thread CPUs coming in the second half of 2018. Forgive me, I seem lackluster. It's like 2, 3 in the morning and my sleep is horrible, I may be sick. But anyway, from what it appears, Intel even has this little slideshow that shows right here, second half of 2018. Uh, Z37 is coming up Coffee Lake, obviously. Uh, that's coming pretty soon, isn't it? But right here, you notice like the only thing that's different is like this little smidgen square here that goes off into some other panel that we're not allowed to see yet, which is a Z390. The Z390 will support the 8-core 16-thread processors. These are being put in place to compete with Ryzen from AMD. And thank God for the competition because now Intel is finally off of that 4-core 8-thread fucking song and jig they've had us on for God knows how many years. What is almost 10? These processors will be Ice Lake and it might be the first 10 nanometer Intel CPU. So this may be the Intel CPU to upgrade to if you have been you know sitting on your hands waiting you know for an intel like if you're hell-bent on intel whatever more power to you i'm not going to sit here and tell anybody what the fuck to buy i'll just tell you what's a better deal uh, as far as i'm concerned you know if you were waiting for that intel upgrade which a lot of people have because usually for intel you get one chip and you stick with that thing for a couple generations because the upgrade path is so incremental it's barely legible point being this is finally it the 10 nanometer process is coming which is interesting and good but isn't ryzen 2 gonna be like seven nanometer give me a second to look this up as i can't remember all right so i was correct that the amd zen cpu roadmap zen 2 i'm guessing sure for ryzen not 100 percent sure because i know ryzen 2 is on the way and that will be a seven nanometer process and that's due out in 2018 so obviously the move by intel is to circumvent or should i say combat actually the next gen Zen CPUs. If I remember the quote from AMD correctly, Ryzen was the worst case scenario for them. And since Ryzen did well, supposedly Ryzen 2 was going to be leaps and bounds better. Or are they calling it Zen? I don't know, 100% sure. Zen 3 will be 7 nanometer plus process in 2019, aimed at high performance desktop and data center processors. Interestingly enough, but that's too far in the future. Right now, we're focusing on the fact that Intel has something on the horizon. So supposedly, the CPUs from Intel are allegedly constructed on the 10 nanometer process Arc Ice Lake architecture. Details from Eurocom as a known manufacturer of high-end laptops and workstations that are designed to be mobile yet fully upgradable. A representative of the company revealed on Notebook 
review forms that they will update their Tornado 5 laptops to the Z93 chipset. Forgive me, Z390 chipset, dyslexia. Supporting Intel's 8-core 16-thread CPU arriving in the second half of 2018. The rep also mentioned that the Tornado F7 will also receive an update, but the company has no plans to update their Tornado series to the current Z370 chip, which launches in a few weeks. Interestingly enough, maybe they're just skipping it. Or maybe, you know... Intel allowed them to use the same sort of shit with the newer CPUs considering the sockets the same as I just said. So essentially, Ice Lake will be the first real major game changer in a while. It's all been 14 nanometers since Broadwell. So now 10 nanometer is around the corner and I'm quite interested in what they deliver as, I don't know, like, I don't know what Ryzen 2 is gonna do. But frankly for me, I'm curious as to what Intel has to offer because the single thread performance on Intel is amazing. Also, uh, recently, the benchmark of the 7980XE is super fast, but it costs $2,000, obviously. Uh, it's 18 cores, 36 threads or something like that. So you get two extra cores over the 1950X from Ryzen Threadripper. But for those two extra cores, you're paying $1,000. Keep in mind though, that from what these leaks say that Tweaktown got a hold of the benchmarks on the new i9-7980XE processor. Kernel Joy released their data on the Asus Apex motherboard with the 18-core 36-thread clocked at 4.2 gigahertz on all CPU cores. That's actually, that's not bad at all. Really, all cores. Actually, when I think about it, that's pretty legit. Uh, Intel has the new Turbo Boost Max 3.0 letting the i9-7980 XE boosts all CPU cores up to 4.4 gigahertz. Still, just looking at these benchmarks, Intel's new yeah, 7980 XE is a mega testing beast. It is priced at $2,000. You'll need to sell a kidney or two to get it. It's funny they wrote that because that's exactly what I'm thinking. This shows the Cinebench test. Uh, the 1950X ran at 3,069 and the 7980 XE did 4,204 you're looking at roughly around 1,130 extra points or whatever the hell you want to call it over the Ryzen architecture, which doesn't surprise me. You know, I expected this from way back when I was first doing comparisons between all these CPUs as a really long video like months ago. I don't know how many people actually watched it, but when I look at this, it's essentially what I expected, but the trade-off is for that boost, you're paying an extra thousand dollars. And from a monetary standpoint, you know, if money's no object, I fucking A, go for the 7980XE. But if you are, you know, do you, if you live by meager means, paycheck to paycheck, so on and so forth, the better bet is still Threadripper overall, you know, if you are doing multitasking things. Even though the single core performance on Threadripper is actually worse than a 4790K. How do I know this? I tested it and I was surprised. I like put the thread ripper on first being lazy and then it's like, eh, let me see what my 4790K does 30 seconds later and the 4790K blazed past the thread ripper. It's like, whoa, but you're not getting thread ripper for single core performance, you know, just saying it's interesting to know that, but still, oh, fucking hey man. I don't know. I'm like looking at this and it's like, that's impressive. And hell, for an extra thousand dollars, I think it should be a lot faster than that. I mean, yes, it's faster. It's expected to be faster. It's a good score, but it should be a bit more for a thousand dollars. I mean, for a thousand dollars more, maybe this thing should have did, you know, six thousand and something. Maybe I'm crazy. It should be damn near double the performance or over half the performance because it's over half the price. But that's just me speculating and thinking in some sort of weird world where a consumer gets what they pay for in this day and age. So do forgive me. And forgive my lethargic sounding voice. Wish I had this sort of access. I'd like open the box for the 7890XE and I'd sniff that CPU, dude. I'd sniff it like a line of cocaine. Well, that's gonna do it for me. Rate, comment, subscribe if you so choose to. If not, the hell with it, man. You know, I know how it is. You don't feel like even clicking the button. You probably didn't stick around this far on the video. God bless you, you son of a bitch. Get out there, live your life. Do something awesome. Kick some ass. Do crank off titty dancers. That's my move. But always remember if you do decide to 
follow me on social media everywhere from Facebook to Twitch and Twitter. It only makes my voice louder and me more viable in a hobby that is now full of paid shills, corporate sleaze bags promising you one thing and then delivering you another. And then there's one guy out in the abyss screaming into a cave. They're trying to rip you off. And you're like, who is that? Who is that guy? And then Linus is like, oh, don't pay him any attention. Remember to support our sponsor, Lynda.com. Okay, Linus. They're trying to-